Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So I promise my end series uploads will stop soon. <laughs> well, I'm running out of blasters to cover and we're getting close to the end of the mainstream releases right now. But I want to cover a blaster that was probably more highly anticipated than the Infinite and that's not a joke. This is the end series dealer. Why was this thing so anticipated? Because it's a tactical jolt, a real one. And it's so tactical that they even give you a scope to put on the blaster right out of the box. That's amazing. Let's take a look at this thing. So the Dealer is a 2024 release out of N-Series, marking it as one of the smallest blasters in the whole lineup, being about the same size as the Ward, maybe a little bit smaller than the Ward. So what does this one do with that space since this is just a single shot blaster instead of a two shot blaster? Stock attachment point. That's an actual stock attachment point that is compatible with Nerf stocks on something this tiny, making it the new smallest blaster that has a stock attachment point built in, previously going to the Vortex Diatron or even the Nerf Strife, but I honestly think the Diatron is a little bit smaller. So I have to cover this thing because it's insane, but we gotta start with the design first. And honestly, the design of this is a lot weaker than a lot of other N-Series blasters, not just because they randomly changed the color scheme to this sort of orange and then this like bright, almost hydrochloric acid looking neon green that looks like it should be glow in the dark, but it totally isn't glow in the dark. It's a really, really weird colored blaster, but the shape of the blaster isn't really very good either. It's really front and top heavy, which doesn't make much sense because it's meant to be a tiny little pistol and it looks incredibly weird. Not to mention because of this angle right here, it is hard to aim and I constantly find myself accidentally aiming it down. See, it looks like I'm aiming straight forwards, I am curving the blaster down. I have to hold the blaster like this to aim forwards, and it looks like I'm tilting it up. It's a really weird effect, and you end up tilting the blaster down more than you want to almost every single time. You will see more of that in the firing demo because I really struggled to fire this blaster through the demo. And even then, the sort of circuit board design that you see on most N-Series blasters isn't as apparent here. It does show up like right here and throughout this area right there, but it's not here, it's not up here, it's not back here on the grip, and it's nowhere on any of the orange. So the blaster looks a lot more bland than the other N-Series blasters, even when you're looking at it in person. Yes, it does have some pretty cool looking lines and stuff and the stock attachment point, but I just can't say that this blaster looks good. Of course, that's a subjective take, but it is still my take and this is my video. What about the ergonomics? This blaster just has a main grip being a small single shot pistol and it is extremely comfortable. If you guys remember my flex video from a few days ago, you'll know that that grip was a little bit too short. This blaster fixes that problem by adding an extra lip down here that gives a lot more real estate space for your three fingers. It's a lot more comfortable than the flex all in all as well as the fact that they actually rounded off the back of this better than they did on the flex. So that just confuses me. Why didn't they just put this grip on the flex? It's so similar and it fits the exact same plunger tube. So they could have easily put this grip on the flex with no issues, but they didn't for some bizarre reason. So how does this blaster work? Well, it's a single shot front loader. So you front load a dart in like this, you pull the T-pole down and you fire once. Now here's the big problem. As you can see, this blaster has this sort of single sided wall that says one on it, indicating that it's a single shot blaster. It looks really cool, but if you're left-handed, you're screwed because this thing's in the way and there's no way to easily load a dart in without tilting the blaster upside down. If you're right-handed, it still kind of sucks because you have these big walls up at the top and on the bottom that make it pretty hard to get the dart fit in properly. On top of that, the barrel isn't even flared like it is on the flex. Granted, it wasn't flared very much on the flex, but it's still substantially harder to get the dart into this blaster than it is on the flex which is kind of a problem because being a single shot blaster, you should be able to at least reload it fast. Let's talk triggers and smoothness of operation. Pulling down the T-pull is a pretty smooth experience and it's got a satisfying click when you hit the bottom. And the trigger pull is pretty snappy too, but there is a problem with this trigger. As you know, it's mounted from the bottom because it's just a lever arm linkage to initiate the catch, which is down here. The problem is that because it's mounted from the top, the top half of the trigger is way easier to pull than the bottom half of the trigger. So if you pull the blaster down and you pull the top half of the trigger, it's really easy, no problem. But as you can see, if I try and pull the bottom half, 
I have to put a lot more force on the trigger to get it to pull, which is kind of annoying because you don't really think about where your finger is on the trigger when you're actively running and gunning with the blaster. And sometimes you'll find that the blaster is way harder to fire for absolutely no reason. And it sucks. Now I'm gonna talk about the extra problem, the plastic quality. Now this isn't something that I brought up yet because I'm going to do a whole video addressing N-Series as a whole after I'm done with the majority of the blasters that have come out on store shelves up to this point, but the plastic quality from N-Series has been very inconsistent, and this one is the worst feeling out of all of them. This thing feels like an Alpha Strike blaster, and you can easily see I can squeeze this in with literally no force whatsoever. That applies all over this orange part of plastic. And even here, this isn't made very well either. The whole blaster feels extremely thin and extremely cheap. Up here is the very worst. I mean, granted, this is kind of useless because it's just an extra part of the plastic, but it's still a part of the blaster. And it feels awful. It feels like this thing would crack or scuff up with the lightest drop. And I'm surprised that it hasn't. And just a quick rundown of the scope in case you're interested. It's just a little scope. It has a single reticle inside of it rather than two, so you can't really aim through it. But it does look cool, I guess. But again, the plastic quality, it feels really bad. It actually feels just as bad as the, of the scope as it does the orange part of the blaster. So, uh, match made in heaven. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the stock attachment point. How well does it work? Yeah, it works. It's a stock attachment point on a teeny tiny little blaster. And it even works with the proprietary stock that the wielder came with. So that's really cool. But here's the big problem. If I take a look at any other blaster that has a stock attachment point, even a pistol like this, you can see that there is dead space underneath the stock attachment point, as well as this large ridge right here that separates it from the grip. This blaster does not have that. So why is this significant? Well, as you can see, let's take this stock for example, it goes all the way down here and it perfectly touches this bottom piece right here. If you put it on the dealer, this happens. That's not good because now the blaster is extremely uncomfortable and kind of painful to hold on to. Your hand is pressing actively into the stock and not to mention, the stock doesn't even have stability, because the stability from the stock does not come from the little ridges, it comes from the stock pressing up against the body of the blaster. And since this stock attachment point is so small, there's nothing for the stock to press into, so it just kind of wobbles around like crazy, which makes the stock attachment point useless. Yeah! <laughs> Low. Now I'm aiming high. Eventually one's got a hit. Oh, come on. There we go. That's what it's supposed to do. Yeah, just for good measure. 
So what mod potential does the dealer bring to the table? Well, surprisingly, substantially more than the original Flex, and probably even more than the Jolt. This blaster is completely screwed together, which means you can pop the shell right open without having to deal with any clips like you had to do with the Flex or the Ace. And this blaster has a singular block of all the internals that just comes right out of the shell, which means all this nonsense can just go. You can literally just have the plunger tube with a trigger and a barrel stuck to it, and that's the blaster. The air restrictor is sticking straight out of the back of the barrel, which means that you could easily access it from behind without having to worry about all this plastic stuff in the way and figuring out how to patch the hole in the shell, which is honestly a good thing because you could easily just drill right through the air restrictor, patch it up with epoxy putty, and put the shell back together and call it a day. With the excess of plastic here, you could probably make extra room for more epoxy putty or even move the plunger tube up here in the back. That's a viable option that you could do if you really wanted to for whatever reason. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you probably could. It's one of those things where it's like, you can, but that doesn't necessarily mean you should. Still, mod potential is there, and you can definitely do a lot with this blaster. So do I recommend the dealer? No, I don't really recommend anybody take a look at this blaster. I don't think there's really any practical usage for this thing. It's way too big for being a single shot blaster. The whole gimmick of the stock attachment point is kind of oversighted by the fact that the stock attachment point is put on shoddily and in a way that you can't really enjoy having a stock on the blaster. The performance is no better than the flex, so you're not even getting an FPS or accuracy boost rather than just using an original flex. And the only thing that I can see this blaster being good for is mod potential. You have the block of internals just right here. So really the best thing you could do with this blaster is open this thing up, take the internals, mod the internals, and then put the internals in a flex. There's really no reason to look into getting one of these blasters as being a blaster right now. So if you do want to get this blaster, I will link the gear up pack in the description below. And if this blaster becomes available separately from the gear up pack, I will link that in the description below as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.